Or we spend our money to build a port for them. Yeah. Um, it's Joe Biden's reason. We need to get humanitarian aid into Gaza. I don't think we should. I, I don't think any of our aid that goes to Israel to support our greatest ally, arguably maybe in the world, to defeat Hamas and Iran and Russia, and probably North Korea is in there in China too, with them and helping, helping uh, <coughs> Hamas. We shouldn't be spending a dime on humanitarian aid. It, it should be like Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Get it over quick. You just heard Republican Tim Wahlberg of Michigan's 5th Congressional District tell his constituents that we shouldn't spend a dime on humanitarian aid to starving Gazans. In fact, he wants to give them the Hiroshima and Nagasaki treatment and just nuke them. Kill them all. He actually said this out loud during a town hall. Now, this is not the first time that a Republican has called for the eradication of every single human being in Gaza, 50% of which, by the way, are children. We've heard Republicans call for Gaza to be turned into a parking lot. One told reporters, kill them all. So, I mean, we know how bloodthirsty these monsters are. It's just still a little bit jarring to see them be so explicit in their calls for mass murder. I don't think I'll ever get used to that, nor should I, nor should you, right? But don't you worry, because he claims that he didn't actually mean the thing that he said that we all saw him say, by the way. On Twitter, he responded to the backlash, writing, as a child who grew up in the Cold War era, the last thing I'd advocate for would be the use of nuclear weapons. In a shortened clip, I used a metaphor to convey the need for both Israel and Ukraine to win the wars as swiftly as possible without putting American troops in harm's way. My reasoning was the exact opposite of what is being reported. The quicker these wars end, the fewer innocent lives will be caught in the crossfire. Oh, okay, I get it. So he called for Gaza to be nuked because he actually wants to protect civilian lives. That makes so much sense. Thank you for clarifying. Unbelievable. Now, in that same clip, he also said we shouldn't give them a dime in humanitarian aid as they are on the cusp of famine. So he's saying let them starve and die. So even by his own standards, pretty depraved. But it's just insulting that he's going to pretend like he didn't say that, right? We already know that you're a psychopath. You already said the quiet part loud. There's no need to try to gaslight us and pretend as if you don't want every single citizen in Gaza to be slaughtered because that's what you want. In fact, it's your official policy position since you support Israel unequivocally as they do a genocide and deliberately starve the people of Gaza. But he's not alone, right? He might say terrible things like that, but his position effectively aside from the nuking part, but his position of we should let them all die or kill them, that is the standard position for our government, and proudly so, by the way. For example, John Fetterman responded to a headline from the Washington Post that talks about how Biden is hypocritically condemning Israel's actions on one hand, yet still sending them weapons on another. And Fetterman responded to that saying, no conditions, zero hypocrisy, stand with Israel. Doesn't matter how much carnage there is, doesn't matter how many children die, we're going to stand with Israel no matter what. That's what he's saying. And here's how other Democrats like Josh Gottheimer responded to people in his own party who dared to say that maybe we shouldn't be aiding and abetting Israel's genocide here. Here's how he responded to those types of Democrats. Yeah, and it's, listen, it's a, as you've just pointed out, it's a extremely small uh, cancer in the caucus. Um, and um, who, and, and frankly, the Republicans suffer the same a uh, small minority of people who are loud um, and not supportive of the U.S. Israel relationship, um, and and many of us have have called them out for years when we've had problems. But listen, since October seventh, we've seen some very vocal people in our party. Again, a very small number of people. Like there's the uh and i'll point to one vote in particular uh after i guess it was the week or so after october 7th we held a vote on um uh, on condemning hamas and there were 14 democrats who voted no on that um and uh you know i, I called it despicable what they did that was my you know, nicest thing i could come up with immediately 
but of of about 200, you had 14 people. And I, I'd say that's what you're talking about, uh, just relative. And of the 14, I'd say probably 10 of those or eight of those are consistently what you and I'd consider not great. It's a very tiny number compared to the overwhelming support for the U.S. Israel relationship. Hey, Josh, it's April now. Have you condemned the terrorism from the Israeli government yet or just condemned the people who've condemned the genocide? Of course not. And his response would probably be that this isn't a genocide and he just deny that. But he can deny it all he wants. So can John Fetterman. So can Tim Wahlberg. That doesn't change the facts. 30 to 40,000 people have been killed, including 14,000 children. And they are being purposefully starved by Israel. This is something that the Israeli government has said that they're doing, not me. They said we are cutting off food, electricity. It's collective punishment. That's a war crime. And also, over the weekend, Israel turned Al-Shifa Hospital into what's being described as a mass graveyard. And Gazan journalist Hassam Shabbat's first-hand account shed some light into just how barbaric their actions here was. Quote, I have been working nonstop for the past six months covering what's happening in Gaza, but what I saw today while visiting Al-Shifa Hospital was unlike anything I've ever witnessed before. Israeli occupation forces executed 300 Palestinians in and around the hospital, and this morning I witnessed hundreds of bodies outside the hospital. There wasn't one full body. All the bodies were either people pieces or heavily mutilated. The bodies were in horrific conditions. Many had their hands and legs tied behind their backs and were flattened by a bulldozer. Many of the bodies were burned and left to be crushed to pieces. Several bodies were decomposed and partly eaten by stray dogs. Most of the bodies were unrecognizable. Families could only identify them by their clothes. Al-Shifa Hospital was considered the largest medical complex in the Gaza Strip, catering to many complex cases. It has been completely destroyed. They burned it down and destroyed all medical equipment. Israeli occupation forces have one goal, and it's to destroy every inch of Gaza. Yeah. And I'll spare you the images that he shared because they are utterly haunting and not safe for YouTube, quite frankly. But a side note here, does anyone remember when the aforementioned cancerous progressives like Rashida Tlaib were attacked for daring to suggest that Israel was responsible for the bombing of Al-Aqsa Hospital back in November? Remember that? See, it's interesting to me now how the people who suggested Israel would never do such a thing are conspicuously silent after they've bombed countless hospitals. Don't think that we've forgotten. But as they continue to subject Gazans to relentless terrorism every single day, they're also waging a war on journalists and even passed the law shutting down Al Jazeera, who's been reporting on their war crimes, hence why they want to quiet them. And aside from that, they also bombed the Iranian embassy in Syria, further escalating this to a regional conflict after they promised Biden that they'd soon be ramping down. Turns out that was another lie by the Israeli government. Now, how does our government respond to all of this and months of carnage in Gaza? By basically saying... Go Israel. You do what you need to do. Starve them. Even nuke them if you have to. We've got your back no matter what. Now, to be clear, genocidal comments from Republicans like Tim Wahlberg are completely inexcusable, and I would implore you to call his office at 202-225-6276 and politely tell his staff members that the congressman should resign for his genocidal rhetoric. But let's be clear here. Saying is one thing and doing is another. Biden is the one in power right now, not Republicans. And we should never normalize genocidal rhetoric from the likes of Tim Wahlberg, but we also shouldn't normalize genocidal actions from the president of the United States. And I say this because after Biden's administration has been trying to dissuade Israel from launching a ground invasion in Rafah, they also quietly authorized the transfer of more weapons and warplanes to Israel, including, quote, more than 1,800 MK-84 2,000-pound bombs and 500 MK-82 500-pound bombs. And the Washington Post reports that the 2,000-pound bombs have been linked to previous mass casualty events throughout Israel's military campaign in Gaza. Now, this latest transfer of 2,000 pound bombs and warplanes to Israel was not actually disclosed to the public. And the only reason why we know about this is because Pentagon officials anonymously confirmed it to news outlets who found out about this. But now we all know. So Biden couldn't keep this under wraps. Sorry, but we found out. So the question is, what's the excuse now? Because he's been saying publicly that 
they need to rein it in. They shouldn't do a ground invasion. But yet he's giving them more weapons to do the thing that he said he's concerned about, right? Well, you'll be surprised to learn that uh, his answer here, his excuse, rather, is not very persuasive. Administration's policy hasn't changed. It is not conditioning weapons to Israel. But when you go and make such an authorization of the transfer in recent weeks, even if the <clears throat> actual weapons transfer has been approved years ago, don't you think that is going to damage the weight of your word, the, your credibility, and basically your, your sincerity in saying that part of many Palestinians so have been killed? I do not agree with that at all. We have been very clear that we want to see Israel do everything it can to minimize civilian casualties. We have uh, made clear that they need to do every that they need to operate at all times in full compliance with international humanitarian law. At the same time, we are committed to Israel's right to self-defense, and this is a long-term commitment the United States has made, that it made before October 7th, and that continues, uh, uh, in, <coughs> it continues since October 7th. So it, obviously the fight in Gaza is connected to Israel's long-term security in very substantial ways. I got into some of that with, with response to Matt's question. Uh, but Israel still faces, <coughs> uh, on, in addition to the security challenge posed with, in Gaza, it still faces an Iran that is hostile to Israel. It still faces Hezbollah on its northern border that is hostile to Israel and says it is committed to the destruction of, of Israel. And so we are going to continue to support Israel's ability to defend itself against those sworn enemies that want to see it, it end as a modern state or a state at all. Hey, just to follow up, a 2,000 pound bomb is, is self-defense in your opinion? It is, it is a, um, uh, so they need to have the ability to defend themselves against a very well-armed adversary. Like I said, Iran, Hezbollah, which has thousands and thousands of fighters and quite sophisticated uh, material and quite sophisticated mm -hmm. weaponry as we've seen them deploy, <coughs> excuse me, against Israel in the last few days. So yes, they do need the, the, the modern military equipment to defend yeah, themselves against those adversaries. In Gaza before, in the beginning in Gaza. And we have made clear to them that, when, that whatever, um, whatever weapon they use in Gaza, be it a bomb, be it a tank round, be it anything, that we expect them to use those weapons in full compliance with international humanitarian law. And we have, said, we have had very frank conversations with them about the fact that there far too many civilians have died. I'm guessing he was getting choked on all of the bullshit he was spewing there. Now, Israel is not using weapons in compliance with international law, obviously. It is illegal to cut off food and electricity from civilian populations. Collective punishment is a war crime. So is bombing hospitals and refugee camps and universities and other civilian infrastructure, places where people who are starving are lining up to get food. Bombing them is against international law. So Israel is very clearly not following international law, but the Biden administration is lying and saying they are because sending more weapons to a country in violation of international law would violate the Foreign Assistance Act. So the remedy here is to just say they're following international law and to continue sending them weapons if that's what you want to do. That's what Biden's doing. Now, it gets even worse because Biden also quietly reversed sanctions that he placed on the seven Israeli settlers. I mean, it was bad enough that he only sanctioned seven of them, but to quietly reverse them is just embarrassing. Now, furthermore, journalist Ryan Grimm points out that he took the time to condemn Hamas in his proclamation of Arab American Heritage Month. And Ryan Grimm had to include a follow-up because too many people thought that it was so absurd that it had to be an April Fool's joke, but it was not. Bringing up Hamas at all while mentioning Arab Americans kind of tells you how low Biden's opinion is of them. It's just genuinely embarrassing. Now, this all takes place as foreign lobbying groups like AIPAC are trying to oust the 12 or so cancerous Democrats actually standing up to Israel and criticizing them for their genocide. And it's working. One poll showed that Cori Bush is losing to her AIPAC-funded opponent, Wesley Bell. And two polls showed that Ilhan Omar is tied with her AIPAC-funded opponent, Don Samuels. So that's nice. Very normal government we have here. Most of our government is cheering on this rogue country that's doing a genocide and attacking anyone daring to speak out and condemn it. And I understand that people are frustrated when they see this. It's genuinely nauseating and demoralizing. But if you feel anger and frustration when you see all of this like I do, that's not a bad thing. It means you're a normal human being. You are having a normal reaction to a genocide that is taking place. 
and you are hopeless in this situation. It is normal and good to have feelings about that, unlike these psychopathic politicians. So don't let the genocidal enabling politicians make you feel like you're going crazy. They're the ones who are crazy. You're on the right side of history. They're on the wrong side of history. And right now, they might be in the consensus, politically speaking, but decades from now, they're going to look really bad just as they did about the Iraq war. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.